Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. End of summer. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If you're all at sea and someone keeps rocking your boat, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, I hope that you won't think I have any ulterior motives in writing to you. May I just say that what I'm asking you to do is very important to me. More important than I can tell. And the most important thing of all is speed. You see, Mr. Valentine, I am alone, and it is difficult for me to find out certain things by myself. Who is Rosé writing to? George Valentine. Who is George Valentine? Oh, if she... She would only move her shoulders so I could see the words. Could she possibly suspect... Oh, no, of course not. Only she'd move so I could see. Oh, I must go easy. I must... Oh, what lovely shoulders in the morning light. Round, sloping, and warm. Warm as the end of summer. Now I'll be able to see what she's writing to Mr. Fallon. Oh, Oh, I didn't see you. I didn't know you were in the room. Oh, (laughs) didn't you? On my way outside for a cigarette and a breath of air, that's all. Will you join me? Were you looking over my shoulder? Mm Mm-hmm. That's quite a bill you have on your charge account, isn't it? You were looking. (laughs) I'll tell you a secret. Of course I was. But uh, all I could see was you, Rosaire. Uh, I don't think I care for a smoke just now. I'll finish sending my bills and things. You go ahead. It's all right, Rosaire. I'll see you later on. Miss Burlick, this is a permanent house, isn't it? I mean, uh, well, most of the places up here seem to be cabins. Oh, yes, but I'm not. Not permanent, that is. It's my sister and her husband's house. Uh They live here the year round. I've just been here a short time, my first visit. I see. I haven't seen my sister, Marcia, this morning, but perhaps you'd like to meet her husband. He's Frederick Jindal, the artist. Oh, Oh, yes, I I think I've heard his name. He specializes in murals, you know. Busy right now with some panels for a new library. Has to meet a deadline. Oh, Frederick. Frederick, would you... Well, I... Guess it doesn't make any difference. He... He didn't hear me, I guess. <laughs> oh, we're not insulted. What good's an artist without a temperament? Well, he's not like that. But he's working awfully hard, terribly hard. I've been modeling for one of his panels. He's... Well, I don't understand him very well. My shoulders... You and your sister seem to go for different types. What? Yes. Yes, Marcia's much smarter than I am. More positive, more beautiful, more everything. I think what Miss Brooks meant was the man you asked us to check into is a little easier to understand, that's all. Oh. No, I'm not a very complex person. You know, Miss Burlick, I don't normally like to investigate someone without knowing why... But I think in your case, it stood out all over your letter. And now it's written all over your face. Really? So here goes. Dr. Nicholas Wills, age 37. Single. Residence, 347 Maple Drive, City. Graduate Stanford Medical School and Children's Hospital and private practice in pediatrics. Belongs to a lot of clubs. Got a list here. Plays good golf. And as for his financial standing... Oh, please, I don't care about that. I didn't think you did. Dr. Wills is now vacationing in a cabin about a half a mile from here, as I'm sure you already know. And uh, as for the women in his life, there seemed to be none, at least until he came up here. That was what you really wanted to know, wasn't it? Well, I... Well, I... I've only met him a few times. Marcia introduced me one day when we were swimming. Mr. Valentine, I've had my fingers burned in the past, that's all. You learn to be cautious when you're... Not as young as you should be. You? (laughs) Miss Perlick, you underestimate yourself. From the minute I walked into this room, all I've been able to see is you. I know you'll have a little lunch before you go back. Perhaps you'd like to take a walk while I see if I can find Marcia. Just a second. What else is bothering you, Miss Perlick? What? 
Well, you're thinking about two things at once. And you haven't sounded as, well, as eager and as urgent as you did in the letter. Has something happened since then about Dr. Wills? No. No, of course not. Just that I'm embarrassed, I guess. I told you that I wasn't a very complex person. So that's all it was. Hiring a man to find out things that aren't worth knowing anyway. Oh, you're a fool, Rosaire. A dear, warm-blooded fool. That's what's so nice about you. But I can relax now, can't I? I should relax. Because now your Mr. Valentine will never guess what I did, will he? No one will ever guess. say to the doctor. Oh, I don't know, Brooksy. I'll think of something. Uh, how do you like the weather, Doc? Oh, something like that there. George. Not hard to drop in on people up in a place like this. Yeah, but... Dr. Wills. Come on, Brooksy. But, George, you he can't won't just... not mind. Everybody leaves their cabins open around here. Besides, we know about him. He's a normal, amiable sort of guy. Well, he's not out playing golf. There's his clubs. Uh-huh. Yeah, look through there. You can see out back. A huh? canvas to park a car under, only no car. Oh, yeah. You know something else? I don't see any medical instruments either. But Georgie's on a vacation. What difference does that make? Doctors and instruments are like St. Bernard's and brandy. Well, not exactly. Okay. Okay, but take a look. Dresser drawer, still open. No razor, any place around. No toothbrush, no suitcase. Hmm. I'd say we're not going to be able to ask any questions of the good doctor. Check. Whatever it is that's in the air, we'll just have to fly through alone. May. Huh? wonder who she is. What are you talking about? Well, the name May doodled here by the telephone. And on the pad, there's a number. Yeah. 673-R3. Well, Brooksy, we're not here to snoop. Oh, no. <laughs> so let's go back to lunch and do just a little prying. How does one entertain one's guests? Would you like some more iced tea, Miss Brooks? Marsha always did that for me. Such a stream of conversation you can hardly hear yourself think. No, no, it's better this way. There's no voice to interrupt your work. And there'll be no more torment in my mind like there was last night. I need to reduce the gray in the face of famine. It's my best panel. Yes, I must do it before. Did you look out in the garden by the orchard? I said, Frederick, did you look for Marsha out oh, in the Oh, yes, house? yes. She, she's probably just dropped by the club for lunch, Rosaire. It's better this way. What's that, Mr. General? Uh, uh, would you like some more iced tea, Miss Brooks? Oh, no, thanks. See, you know, I just happen to think of something. What does R mean in a telephone number? Why, it means ring, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> you live in the country and people listen in. <laughs> oh, I get it. Like uh, 673-R3... Means ring three, huh? That's our telephone number. How did you happen to know? Oh, well, I, I just noticed it, that's all. Miss Burlick, do you happen to know anyone by the name of May? May. In May, things come pushing out of the ground, waving their colors at you, shouting at you, telling you where to look. What are you talking it, It's my wife's name, Mr. Valentine. Marsha? Well, she calls herself May sometimes. Where did you see that name, Mr. Valentine? Where did you see the telephone number? Well, I just happened to notice. Where did you go on your walk before lunch? No, never mind. I know where you went. I followed you a little way. I knew you'd be suspicious. That's why you came up instead of writing. You went to Dr. Will. Please, Rosaire. Can't we just finish our meal? Frederick, you haven't looked for her. You've been thinking of your work. You didn't look in her room. You haven't seen her all morning since last night. I heard you quarreling, but you haven't seen her since then. I didn't look in her room. Excuse me. Rosaire. There. You see? Her bed hasn't even been slept in. Oh, Miss Burlick, please. We knew you were upset about something. He's so we... gone too, isn't he? I 
walked by Dr. Wills this morning and I saw his car was gone. But you don't have to add two and two quite so fast, do you? Ever since we were children, she's always been more attractive than I. She and Frederick haven't been getting along lately. I don't know what it's all about, but I guess when I saw the way she looked at Dr. Wells yesterday... Well, isn't there anyone we can call to at least find out where the doctor went? I could tell the way she looked at him. There was something between them. They're together somewhere. I know they are. Do be quiet, Roseanne. Good heavens, there's no point in advertising that my wife's run away from me. Oh, yes, yes, that's what happened. We fought last night about it. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to be outraged you would be, Mr. Valentine, but then you're younger than I am. There comes a time when you can't endure the spring anymore, when it's almost a relief to look forward to the quiet end of summer. George, I don't believe you. I don't believe any of them. Yeah, yeah, I know, Brooksy, and you're right. Well, did you get a chance to use the telephone? I called the doctor's office in the city. He's down there, all right. But I couldn't talk to him because he's making his regular Monday visit to hospital patients. Oh. He goes down every week of his vacation. There's nothing unusual about it. And so, of course, he took his things. But, George, there's nothing missing from Marsha's room. And a woman who's running away from her husband would at least take the jacket of her suit. Brooksy, it's all in the air. I don't know what it is. But I'd bet my bottom dollar they didn't run away together. Oh, why did I say that? But I had to say something. Marsha isn't here. I had to explain somehow. They must believe. Rosaire will help them believe with her silly feminine suspicions. Oh, yes, it'll be a day or so before that doctor comes back and people will realize he's been alone. I'll think of something by then. Mr. Valentine won't be here to realize Marsha was never with the doctor. And I can always take care of Rosaire, all right. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gentle. Oh, yes, quite all right. You're leaving? No, no, not exactly. In fact, I just wanted to tell you we're sticking around for a while. You're what? You're what? You're what? You are, Mr. Valentine? Yes, if you don't mind. If it's all right with you. He's staying. What can I say? Well, I shouldn't have told the story, but I can't tell the truth. I, it's likely to be a bore for you. I'm under tremendous pressure, you know. Some work to be done. I down. I mustn't lose control like I did last night. My wife thinks I'm headed for a nervous breakdown. Of course, Mr. Gentle. Miss Brooks and I understand. He's guessed. He's guessed. He's guessed. We understand perfectly. I should have taken precautions. A murderer takes precautions. Yes. You understand, I'm sure. A murderer. A murderer. They know. They yes. know. Yes, Mr. Everyone Valentine, of course. I killed my wife. That I killed her. Yes. I killed her. Whatever I killed you her. say. I killed her. I killed her. I killed her. I... What, what was it you said, Mr. Valentine? Nothing. Just that I'm sure we won't be here long. But I'll have to get help from a garage. You see, my car has a flat tire, that's all. Oh, 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 that's all. But that's a good deal, isn't it? <laughs> well, what a shame. Yes, Mr. Gentle, it is. Isn't it? Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. If your car's engine knocks, take a tip. Just try ping-free Chevron Supreme gasoline. It's scientifically blended to burn evenly to assure smooth power under every driving condition. And that's important when you realize a knocking engine is a strained and laboring engine wasting both power and fuel. With premium quality Chevron Supreme, you'll find your car delivers smoother cruising on the straightaway, faster pickup in heavy city traffic, and extra power on hills. Chevron Supreme is climate-tailored, too. That means ping-free power no matter which temperature or altitude zone of the West you drive in. In fact, for today's high-compression engines, you can't buy a better gasoline. Get it at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. (laughs) 
There is a time of year when the warmth of the sun lies quietly on the land, when the clamor and confusion of growth and early blossom is past, when ahead is the peace and retirement of autumn. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you can only wonder what it is that's in the air. But if your name is Frederick Gentle, and you're an artist, and you know what it is you want, the end of summer. Ah, there, that's it. Yes, I have the line of your shoulder much better now, Rosaire. No, 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 don't move. I'm sorry, Frederick. You uh, don't mind if I watch, do you? Your painting? Why? No, no, naturally not. Thank you. It's very interesting. I, I confess I'm uh, a little confused by it. There's, there's so much intensity. Yes, but that's the point, don't you see? Over here, it resolves itself into the emotional, the unthinking... You mean the figure of the woman? Yes. I wish I could see it. He won't let me see what he's done with me. <laughs> it uh, looks to me, Miss Burlick, like he's uh, sort of idealized you as an escape... <laughs> From uh, problems or something. Mr. Valentine, there's no reason for Oh, you... no, no, forgive me. I, I don't mean anything. I'm just talking, that's all. Your wife must have been an intense sort of person. My wife? <laughs> she seemed to go out of her way to misunderstand me. She could never realize that a man has his work to do. Work that must be done. You must give yourself to your work. But she kept interfering. She tried to make me slow down. Frederick, she only wanted to help. Sit still, Rosaire. Interfering and advising, and I cannot stand interference. She only seemed worried about you. Sit still, Rosaire. I'm sorry. Am I still all right? <laughs> now, there is a woman, Mr. Valentine. All woman, and that's all. Oh, Frederick, I wish I knew what you meant sometimes. It's stupid not to be intelligent, isn't it, Mr. Valentine? He says things like that, and he says other things. And I think sometimes what he means is he... He loves me. Now, now, Rosaire, you're tired and upset. You shouldn't... No, no, no. Let her talk, Mr. Gentle. I thought it was so wrong. I've hated to think of it. My own sister's husband. But maybe it's different now. Maybe I shouldn't be so old-fashioned. Yes, she's got the man I wanted. Maybe I should take hers. Turn about's fair play, isn't it? Maybe I could get so I would understand you, Frederick. I don't know. What do people want out of each other anyway, except to be with each other? Rosaire, my dear, you don't need to talk now. I've kept you posing too Perhaps long. Perhaps I'm, I'm attracted to you too, Frederick. Perhaps all I want is to love and to be loved. Rosaire. Don't touch me. What? No. No, I can't stand you. What made me say those things? But, Rosaire, I did it just what for you. Me? Oh, I'm a fool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Frederick. I can't stand you. What did you mean? What? You said you did it for her. Did what? What did you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Where is your wife, Mr. Gentle? I don't know what you're talking about. Flat tire. Weren't you going to get your car fixed or something, Mr. Valentine? So you could leave? George. What'd you find out? Well, uh, I looked all over, like you say. I didn't find anything. Nothing that would indicate... Well, of course, I don't know exactly what I expected to find. Oh, yes, you do, Brooksy. Oh, yes, I know. George, what do you suppose he did with it? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. He looks like the trunk or hat box type. What? But I looked at I know, his... I know. Oh, I'm just sore because there's nothing you can grab onto. It's a powder keg without any fuses. Well, George, when I was outside, I talked to one of the neighbors for a minute. And I mentioned Dr. Wills. Yeah? And the man said Dr. Wills kept asking about one of the women over here. What? Yeah. The man thought it was amusing because the doctor seemed so smitten with Rosaire. Well, now that knocks the last leg out from under that elopement gag. Oh, we knew that anyway. Oh, Brooksy, the trouble is our gags are wearing thin. That flat tire we cooked up is about worn down to the rim. We're going to have to get out of here, and what are we going to take with us? What are we going to tell anybody? What do we actually know? George. Come on. Miss Burlick. 
Miss Bailey, quick. Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. I... Come on, come on. What is it? Well, I was dusting in the upstairs sitting room. Dusting? When you're upset, you're supposed to do something homely. Something you're used to. But I remember. There used to be a revolver there on the sideboard. A revolver, huh? Miss Burley, you can stop being upset about losing a boyfriend. What? You haven't lost him. Now listen, we need your help. You said earlier you heard your sister and her husband last night quarreling. Well, yes, but... Where did you hear them? When did you hear them? Well, I... I don't know. Sometime after I went to bed, around midnight, I guess. What did they say? I, I don't know. I tried to listen, naturally. She seemed to be pleading. He was shouting. But I couldn't tell. It was so far away. Weren't they in the house? No, no, outside. Okay, then where's your room? The center one there in back. The voices came from in back. Uh-huh. Mr. Valentine, what did you mean when you said about the doctor? Miss Brooks will tell you. Right now, I've got a date. George? Yeah. I've got to stop dripping water on the rock, Angel. I'm going to try a sledgehammer on it instead. Marsha, Marsha, is it true you only wanted to help? Is it true you are only thinking about me? You're out there, but you can't hear me, can you, Marsha? Or was I the one who could never hear you? It's too late to listen, isn't it? Interfering, advising, suggesting. Or were you just begging me to think of something besides my work? Warning me not to work so hard. Warning me about a... Oh, hello there, Mr. Jandal. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. It's all right, Mr. Jandal. I'm just looking for something, that's all. Oh? Well... What did you lose? Oh, it's around here someplace. I'll find it all right. If I have to comb every inch of the place. But I... It's all right. You don't need to help me. You weren't out here in back, were you? Someplace within a radius of that window up there. Rosaire's window. What? Yeah. Because you could hear voices from one to the other, or vice versa, I don't know. Anyway, big voices, excited fighting voices... I'll find something within that radius. What do you mean? I told you, you know what I mean better than I do. What's that over there, a greenhouse? I said, what's that over there? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I'll try the hedge, maybe. I'll find something sooner or later. Oh, Marsha, Marsha, why didn't I listen to you? You said I should rest. Instead, look what I've started. No. Nothing by the hedge. Greenhouse, huh? There's a line. A line from the end of the hedge to the peach tree. An imaginary line. But it has to stop somewhere. He can't go farther than that. Wait a minute. How about the tool shed back there? No, I guess not. The peach tree. Guess I might as well circle around and take a look He's at the... He's going to cross it. He's going to cross the line. Now I have to stop him. I have to, Marsha. I have to stop him. Hey. Huh? Hey, what's the matter with you, Mr. Gentle? I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Shakespeare. Yes, it's what you're trying to do, isn't it? Trying to make me confess. Thanks for being so obliged. Make me confess that I shot her out here last night. you what? Of course I did it, of course. You guessed the minute you saw me. How can man hide the guilt of his mind? But I still have the gun that I used last night. Oh, God forgive me. Well, she warned me that I'd have a breakdown, Mr. Valentine. Yes, you've got to kill him. What else You've got to kill him. Murder is not a matter of choice. Kill him, kill him. George. It's all right now, Angel. Oh, golly. I called you before, but then I looked out and I saw... Didn't you hear the car come up the drive? The, the car? Yes. The car with Mrs. Jendel. Marsha. Your wife. My... My... Marsha. Oh, no, no, you... Brooksy. He'll be okay. Oh. oh, but George, I thought she was dead, too. I know, I know. So did I, Brooksy. Until I began to realize he told me he'd killed her out here last night with a gun. Huh? Well, if Rosaire could hear voices, Rosaire could certainly hear a gun. Oh, yeah. Well, George, Marsha is with Dr. Will. What? 
But another doctor came back with them. Oh, yeah, I see. I guess there was something secret between Marsh and Wills. She must have run to him after the big fight last night. She knew she was right and her husband was wrong. He did need help. But what she didn't know was that the thing she was so worried about had already begun. What thing? She didn't know about his breakdown, Brooksy, that started last night. She didn't know that he'd commit murder in his mind. Oh, I was just thinking. Hmm? Brooksy, did I count too much on something? I mean, uh, you did tell me that you looked all over the place and hadn't found anything, but still... <laughs> George, didn't you look in the greenhouse before we left? <laughs> well, no, as a matter of fact, of course not. Marsha was back, and I knew Well, that... I looked there, darling. It didn't have room for a pin, let alone a body. The greenhouse was crammed to the door with dry grass seed, bulbs for next year... Flats of flowers. <laughs> well, then I figured right, Angel. It's the end of summer. Your car engine may have a long, serviceable life. Others wear out fast. And what makes the difference... Nine chances out of ten, the engine that wears out too soon is a victim of internal rust, the cause of 80% of engine wear. This high-cost corrosive rust starts the moment your engine stops, the result of acid-laden moisture. But RPM motor oil is specially compounded to prevent this internal engine wear. It contains an adhering agent that coats the inside of your engine with a moisture-proof film. Even though your car stands idle for days or weeks, RPM stays on the job, prevents rust. No wonder RPM motor oil is first choice in the West. It's the oil that stops 80% of engine wear. Ask for RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Next week, with George Valentine involved in a new riddle, we'll hear him saying... Yeah, sure, Brooksy. Riley's boys will catch somebody, all right. But I was the one who let McGee know so he could get to the poor guy first. Oh, George, it isn't your fault. Oh, I'm a great guy. First, I chase a girl upstairs so she can get shot. Then her old man is killed. But I said you could And if the Englishman have... turns up a corpse, I'll have a pretty good score today, won't I? Yeah, join Valentine and see the morgue. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Also featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg as Rosaire and Joseph Kearns as Gentle. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.